Well, hello and welcome to the show. Glad you're with us again this week. We are talking about cult starting, and man, do I love cult starting. It's the foundation, it's the beginning. It's like having brand new stuff to work with. I'm super excited about it, and it's all coming up right here on Discovering the Horseman Within. Gonna take a ride on one true horse. So for the last couple of weeks, you've been watching me work with a horse that's not been handled at all until we could just kind of pet on him and touch his face and rub his neck. Today we're starting with a whole different story here. What we've done is we've got a three-year-old horse that we raised on the ranch. This is a fantastic example of my partner's breeding program. He is uh, by our highbrow cat son and out of a great ranch broodmare that we love. He's been handled, he's quiet, he's gentle. It's a separate deal. I want to show you a different horse, different way of working with him, and we're going to spend the next couple of weeks getting this horse under saddle and getting him ridden. Now, you're going to enjoy the next several episodes. Where I like to start, you look at him. He's friendly, he's quiet, he's not scared of me, but I still want to establish authority and develop a relationship by moving his feet around the pen. So I'll send him off. It's not relevant to me that he run around this pen super hard. Actually, that's not important to me at all. This is a bit of a smaller pen. I like a 60 foot pen. This is a 45 foot pen. That's okay. Just means that I have to be really careful with my releases. So as I travel him around the pen here, all I want to see is his consistent movement. And when he's moving consistently, I'll just step out in front of him and change directions. How he changes is not relevant. If he turns towards the fence or towards me at that point, I don't really care. All I'm doing is establishing in his mind that I can move his feet. Once I've established in his mind that I can move his feet and in my mind that I can move his feet, then I can become more definite with what we're gonna do. So now we're gonna start asking for inside turns. I want this horse to turn and look to me every single time. So I don't wanna get in the habit of running around chasing his tail, but I kinda walk a circle here in the middle and let his hip Stay ahead of me, and if I need to, I just throw the rope over there and let my arm reach out and touch his hip, okay? Keep that movement going. If you get in front of what I call his drive line, or basically the girth area, he's gonna stop. So you wanna stay behind that region until you're ready to turn, and then I'll kinda walk away from him right there. And that draws his focus towards me. And that's all that I need. When he draws his focus, well, what happens if, it, if his focus doesn't draw? This colt came right to me. What if that doesn't happen? Send him off and keep him working and ask him again. Watch their ears, watch their eyes, watch their expression. When this colt's looking out of the fence, he's not gonna turn towards you. When he starts bringing his ears and his eyes towards you a little bit and you step away, right there he went away from me, I'll push him forward. That's perfect, exactly what I'm talking about. Push him forward, let him keep working around the pen. Okay, drive him forward around this pen. All of us have a side we work better than the other, right? I work better with their left side to me. His right side means I have to use my left side and I'm not as good with that. And you'll see my horses frequently aren't as good. On that side, it takes me a minute longer to get the same reaction I got a minute ago. There we go, just finished that turn. Now I want those turns consistent. As he moves around in here, I want him to get relaxed. Look how tight his mouth is. His lips are pursed right there. He started to loosen them and I stepped away from him, he came through. When you see his lips loosening, he's understanding what you're asking. When you see his lips pinched tight, he's focused and concentrating, but not necessarily getting the message. So I don't wanna run him to death, that's not my goal. My goal is to ask him to just do inside turns until he starts wanting to come to me, okay? When those inside turns get consistent, I'll ask him to start stopping and facing me. See, that wasn't, there we go. I need him to finish that turn. I send him around here. Now, because of the cameras, I really only get to use kind of two thirds of the pen. 
you really want to practice using the whole pen. Ask for that turn again, right there. Good, ask him to finish that turn. As he comes around here, back away from him. Drive him forward, stay out of his way. One of the issues with a smaller pen, it's easy to get in his way. Okay, so just stay back out of his way. So my good friend Eitan Beth Halakimi told me, Ken, determining the size of the round pen you use is simple. You subtract your age from the number 100, and the resulting number is the size of your round pen. So if you are 18, then an 82-foot round pen would be perfect. And if you are 60, a 40 is just right. So at 43, I'm somewhere around a 57-foot round pen, and that's about what I like, actually. I like a 60-foot pen. Okay, so there we go. Perfect. That's, the, uh, that's what I want to see. Nice, quiet turns with him focusing on me. Right there. Perfect. Ask him again. Perfect. I love that. All of a sudden now he's really got it. So this time I'm going to ask him to stop and face me. So the difference was when I asked for the turn and he stopped towards me, he started to turn, I stand still. I don't push him through the turn in any way, shape, or form. He took a couple of steps towards me. That's a gift. I love it. Never look a gift horse in the mouth. I love a good gift. I'm gonna send him off, finish that turn, right? I don't want him to get scared of me, but he needs to understand exactly like a horse would in the herd. I move his feet. That's the story. That's the story we're telling. Back off and pull his front into me right there. Okay, so in the wild or even in your herd at home, the dominant horse pushes the less dominant horse around. Chases him out, bites an ear, turns him, brings him back. And by doing that, eventually that horse develops a really nice way of understanding who the leader is and follows him. Okay? That's what we're doing here. Same exact thing. But I'm not fast enough to follow him around the pasture. So I put him in the round pen to equalize our athletic abilities. Ask him to turn and face me. Right there. Now you notice that first time he gave me that free gift where he came three steps forward. And now he's like, eh, I don't know about that, Ken. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start approaching him. But I'm, I'm going to watch and when his head comes up and his eyes kind of flare and his nostrils kind of flare, I'm going to turn and walk away. And I'm going to try to turn on an angle and take his body with me. And if it doesn't, I'll keep asking. I'll keep working at it. So I walk towards him here. And as soon as I see it right there, I just kind of turn and drift away from him. And right there, I want to just pull that front end to me. And then I'm going to turn my back on him. The reason I turn my back on him is to give him a complete release. What he does now is his business. Now I can see him out of the corner of my eye. I always keep an eye on the horse. Here's why. I know that they're faster, more athletic, and more powerful than I am. But if this horse were to decide to attack me right now, when I get to the pearly gates and I see St. Peter, I want to know how I got there, right? I never take my eye off that horse because he's dangerous. I love him. He's kind. He's gentle. But he's still a horse. Don't ever forget that. So I walk around him here. I'm just going to ask him to bring his eyes with me right back this direction. If your horse is not willing to bring his eyes to you, you can wait and give him about three seconds. But if he won't bring his eyes to you, then send him off and move his feet. Now, lots of times they'll bring their eyes to you like this, but not move their feet. So what I do then is I hold their eyes. And if he takes his eyes off for more than three seconds, I send him off and make him work. But if he'll hold his eyes to me right there, I'll wait until he turns and adjusts and faces me, just like I face the camera. As I start back here, I want to get this horse to where he follows me all around, right? The important thing to remember is it doesn't all have to happen today. You're going to watch this colt starting series over a month and a half. And I know that's frustrating because you're not going to take a month and a half to start your colt. Right here. Wait, wait, send him off. 
You gave him those couple of seconds to redeem himself and he didn't do it. So you send him off and you say, hey, I was waiting. I called, I asked, inside turn right here. Perfect. Send him back out there. And then right at the same spot again, I love to ask the same question that he answered no to once before, right? So we're gonna walk up, we're gonna see his eyes. Right there when his ears start to twitch and his head comes up, step right over here, bring him over. Only remember last time we gave a big release. We don't need to give his bigger release this time. We'll bring him back over here. Move around here and just bring this horse with us. Bring his eyes to us. Now right here, what I want to do is get back between him and the rail, but it's too tight still. There we go, we bring that front end out. There, that's what I want to see. I'll give him a big release. He moved those front feet forward and he said, I will follow you, right? This is a lot like our lives as Christians. Lots of times when we get crossways of where God wants us, he adds pressure and the pressure stays there in our lives until we bring our eyes back and agree to follow him. And that's exactly uh, what's going on here. It's a great image for us. It's a great uh, example for us in the way he works with us. Lots of times we find ourselves uncomfortable and, and stressed and not enjoying things. And it's because we're not where we're supposed to be in our lives. And that's exactly what this colt's got going on. When he takes his eyes off of me and he gets out of where he needs to be, then all of a sudden life gets tougher. I want to see those front feet come forward. Right now you're seeing a nice tight little circle. I want to see him. Now you notice right now, I told you I want to get back down beside of him. And he's not really letting me and I like that. That's a good thing. He's keeping his eyes so tied to me that I can't get beside him, okay? So, we'll walk around in this way one more time. Perfect. And you notice we're getting closer and closer together. Now right there, you're watching his front feet go backwards. I don't like that. I wanna see his front feet come forward. We've got a lot going on the ranch here all the time. And so a horse just rode by, with obviously with a rider, and that took his attention from me. All of a sudden, he's kind of worried about other things. I want to bring him right back to me. Good boy, right there. Reach up there between his eyes and rub on him. Now, one of the things I like to do, I like to sack my horse out with my hands. Now, he's been petted his whole life. He was raised gentle and quiet. All right, so what I'm gonna do is take my hands right here, start at his head, go up over his ears, I'm bridling him. Rub down his body. Here's one of the exercises I like to do. Rub down his hip, reach towards his back leg, step away. Oh, he lost it, he left. That's not what I wanted to have happen at all. What I wanted him to do was turn and face me. So I'm gonna ask him again. Okay, I'm gonna take him over here to the left this time. Good. He's figuring out he'd way rather stay in my pocket. All right, lead him out here just right. Just right. Walk up here, rub on his face. Good boy. Up over his ears, back down his body, under his girth, same side as I was before. Step away from him. There, a lot better that time. Bring him back out here. I can almost lead him without the halter and lead rope. He's, his focus has come to me. Good boy, pet his face. Oh, easy. So right here he's moving backwards in evasion. And I'm gonna stay with that until his feet stop or until he makes a decision to leave. I don't want him to leave, but he can't run backwards and evade me all the time. We got just a little bit of a tricky spot here on the right. And that's okay, we'll work through that a little bit. There 
Hey, he's pulling himself back. He knows he doesn't want to leave. He's figured that out, right? But he doesn't want to stay quite enough to give me that. I just push right here. I'm asking for quite a bit. Oh, there he goes. Okay, that was his choice. And he's gonna say, well, you pushed and pushed until I had to go. Well, you had a choice. Accept what was scaring you or leave. And when you chose to leave, it means you're gonna work a little harder. When I was a kid in high school, my dad used to make us run for discipline, junior high and high school, and we would run a mile and a half on a real rocky road. There we go, good. And so I got good at running, I had lots of practice. So I came in the house one day and I must have had done something so that dad would set me up for this. Ah, but he was sitting at the table reading a book and there was a sink full of dishes. And so as I came through the kitchen, he said to me, Ken, do the dishes. And I never back talked my dad, but for whatever reason that time I said, oh dad, can you have somebody else do it? I don't want to do it. And he didn't look up or anything. He just said, Ken, go jogging. And that meant go run that mile and a half. So I went and I ran it and I came back in the house and the dishes were in the sink. And as I came through the kitchen, dad said, Ken, do the dishes. I said, dad, I went jogging so I didn't have to do the dishes. He said, no, you went jogging for back talking. Now go jogging. When I came in the house the second time, you know I had an overwhelming desire after running three miles to do the dishes. I couldn't wait to get my hands in that warm soapy water. That's exactly the way I work with this horse. He's got this little bit of a sticky spot and I'm not making him run real far, just enough. Okay, we're gonna just send him off. He's just saying no. We'll just send him off here and we'll let him work for a couple of minutes. Good boy, that's enough. And somebody's gonna say, well, you know touching them between their eyes is their blind spot. Yep, that's why I do that. It requires that he trust me. Sack him out with my hands. Move him around. Step back here. He automatically runs off. He knows where he wants to be. He wants to be in my pocket. But he's gotten the idea that every time I step back over there, he's got to leave. So what I'm going to do this time is try to break that up. I'm going to pet down here, pet on him, and I'm going to leave. I'm gonna leave before he does and try to change what's happening. Go back. Head on him. Walk away this way. There. That was better. Let him think on that a little bit, good. There's what I want to see. I want to see my colt get stuck to me, locked on, so that no matter where I go in the round pen, we're there together. I want to see him get to where he understands when I step away and call to him, he needs to come with me. Perfect.
that's the basics of developing a relationship where he understands your leadership and is willing to follow you. Well, that was a simple short lesson, really uh, 20 minutes or so of working to get this horse to where he's locked onto me and tied on. It might take you longer than 20 minutes. It might take you four days. Don't worry, stay with it, have fun with it and get your horse following you all over the place. In the next show, we're gonna talk about sacking this horse out and getting him to where he can handle spooky and scary obstacles in your hands, on his body, in his back. Remember, that's all next week on Discovering the Horseman Within. And until then, may God bless the trails you ride. Find out more about Ken McNabb horsemanship at kenmcnabb.com. That one true horse, the perfect partner built to ride. One true horse, a bond that cannot be denied. You would search forever just to have the chance to take a ride home.